Uh, Neil McFedrin, and uh, I'm general manager here at, at Gray uh, in Vancouver. Um, so I run the I run the shop uh, essentially. We're a quote unquote traditional advertising agency. Uh, that's our heritage. Pretty much everyone here though is is more digitally focused and digitally savvy, and that's kind of where we're we're migrating. I think it's similar in most advertising. Agencies right now, especially with us. Um, my background is actually digital, so I have been in that space since I started in advertising in the 90s. Um, and uh, it's actually my first gig in years where I don't have digital in my title, or that's not specifically, I'm not the digital guy here. I'm actually mm. focused on running the shop and um, evolving us more uh, uh, to be more digitally, socially. Um, social media focused actually so um, we are uh, we're an extension of the Toronto office so uh, we report into the Toronto office mm -hmm. um, and we're trying to figure out how we can be more of a long hallway structure if you will versus this satellite standalone uh, right. thing. So Van Vancouver is a really interesting um, market it's, it's somewhat the backwater of, of, of advertising there's no real big Head offices here uh, in Canada. Everything is very centralized around Toronto in the world of advertising. All the head offices there, all the media is out of there. All the Unilevers and the Procter's and Gamble's and the Cokes. And mm -hmm. every, everything is very much there. So, you know, we've got I guess what you could say is the table scraps here. Um, what's interesting though is you've got a, uh, a heritage of creativity and and sort of. The forefront of advertising that was kind of come out of Vancouver, um, which is quite fascinating. So there's a strong creative. Yeah, it's been, it has been that way, and I think a lot of that is because of um, what used to be called Palmer Jarvis, where I started, which is now a DDB shop. Um, mm -hmm. Traditionally, was uh, kind of the award-winning uh, agency in the country, and it's um, off the back of that has spun off other agencies of people that have come out of that environment and. Um, grown agencies that are sort of out of Toronto and out here as well too. So, um, so let's talk a little bit about yeah. your uh, your rise into the leadership role. Sure. Um, at what point did you start to think of yourself as having that leadership quality? Is it something that you've always had? Is it something that you grew into? You know, at what point did leadership become? I guess it's it's naturally come to me. It's been part of I think who who I am, which I think ten, leadership tends to be that way. That coupled with early on in the 90s, uh, the sort of mid 90s, I went, this internet thing is really cool. And as an ad guy, junior ad guy, account executive, account coordinator, just starting out, I was like, okay, well, I, you know, I think something's happening here. And I just aggressively pursued it. So I took some HTML courses at night. And it, 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 as a result, it catapulted my career and it threw me into a leadership role. Um, as a result, but I guess it's harsh. It's a bit of, it's a bit of both. What came naturally to me, mm -hmm. but as well as because I pursued the interactive, internet, digital side of the business, it it took me there as well right. too, right? So I think it's it was, you were part of the rising tide. I w yeah, I rode that whole crazy dot com thing. Mm -hmm. Like it was like you know, I I just put up my hand and I said I'm interested in the internet and I aggressively pursued it and self-educated myself I think as anyone did sort of through that era there was no right courses per se it also sounds them. a little bit like you your leadership style maybe through domain expertise or thought leadership would that be correct or yeah I think that's a great way to put it um, definitely I'd say that's that's that was the forefront of it I've, I've, it, it's backed me into this role mm -hmm. you know, 18 years later where the industry has matured enough that someone of my skill set and my experience is now sitting in the seat I'm in, right? Because of because of where we are and what's happened with our industry and how it's, it's such a huge part of what we do now. So the domain expertise, the thought leadership, the knowledge, the hard skills, all that stuff, clearly it's something that's just natural for you. Tell us a little bit about the soft skills, the, the other part of management and leadership that may not be that formalized. And kind of <laughs> I would say I love uh, yeah, I, I, the the HR side of of it um, is uh, 
something that I have to work on more. I'm not, that's not my, like, I, I just like doing work and, and, mm -hmm. and surrounding myself with a team and, you know, and pushing, pushing people to do it. I'm, I would say I'm more of a, a, of a leader by example and leader from the, from behind versus this. I'm not, I'm not, uh, not a chill leader. Yeah, I guess that's kind of a, good, <laughs> a good way to put it. But that's the stuff I've had to uh, I've definitely learned by experience or learned 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 along the way or whatever. But if I if I look at what I do on a daily basis, I would say like the the HR side of the job is probably not my favorite part of it. But that's the that's the nature of the beast. So are there things in that? quiver of expertise, the management expertise, the leadership expertise that you think you still need to work on? Yeah, yeah I, think, I, think, I, think, I think we always do. Um, and I think because, as you've pointed out, and I agree with you, I'm sort of a, a, a domain expert leader versus I, I didn't go, oh, I'm going, to be a, I'm going to be a CEO or, mm -hmm. oh, I have these aspirations to be a managing director or whatever it is. It's kind of like where I've, I've ended up. Those are the things I've... I've I've learned along the way, right? So, mm -hmm. definitely, yeah. Okay. Um, tell us a little bit about the, the physical space that you've worked in over the time that you've had these various leadership roles. Um, advertising agencies are well known for creating great advertising spaces. Tell us a little bit about the physical space and how that influences leadership style and also leadership in, in general. It's interesting. I think that. Um, we're going through it here, where it's like we're we're grappling with um, how do we physically set our how do we physically set ourselves up. I think more and more uh, the roles of advertising are are melding more. So I mean, it's it's there. When I first started in the industry, there was definitely a bigger divide between the creative people and the account people mm -hmm. versus the production people. I think those roles are starting to mostly because of social media, I think, are starting to uh, come together more. So uh, traditionally, then, you would have had like a, a physical separation of where the creative people sat and where they reported and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff, right? So, Put them in cages. Yeah, or on a whole other floor. Or, right. <laughs> I mean, way back in the day, it was like the writers and the, and the copy guys weren't even together, right? right. It was like, uh, and that was back when, you know. Yeah. So that you're going organized. through a bit of a physical organization. We're going, we're going through that right now. I think it's physically uh, physical space, and I think just definition of roles um, uh, and, and how that works, especially on the strategy slash um, uh, account management. Uh, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, community management, mm -hmm. uh, content development side of things. I think that that's where, as an industry, we're really grappling with um, the model. I mean, I, my personal opinion is the economic model is broken. So right. uh, it's based on a uh, like the old model of, of campaign mm -hmm. is is based on slow moving creative development. Um, uh, it's you develop your thirty second TV spot and then you spin that out over a bunch of media and that's 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 what it is and you kind of move on to the kind of move on to the next thing and that we now we have to be agile. We have to be considerably more prolific with the content we're developing. So, mm -hmm. the fee-for-service model doesn't 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 fit that. So, it's affecting everything from roles to how we sit to what we do. So, it's a really interesting time in the business, actually. I think to to uh, um, be part of it, but also I think be a leader in it to try and figure out like what where where are we going mm -hmm. with this thing? What are we doing with this thing? How do we how long have you been in this particular role? Since May. Since May. Yeah. So it's, it's you're just finding your stride now, or yeah, and it's it's complicated. It's there was uh, um, uh, the fellow who was here was here for 28 years, and he had he tried to retire, and then they brought in a person who uh, unfortunately had cancer, and so it's been a it's been a complicated it's been a complicated uh, situation too. So so it sounds so, sorry one second. Yeah. Uh, before you ask that, could you slide just that? There you go. Can just get the wheels in the Yeah, way. sure. Sorry. Take the wheels off. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, obviously, taking new roles, reorganizing, dealing with past cultural or philosophical changes, uh, some of that's stressful. 
very stressful in some cases. How do you deal with your own personal stress? How do you organize around it and make sure it doesn't overwhelm you? Uh, that's a good question. I'm, I'm, I, I think I'm just, I'm, I'm, I tend not to be a, a, a stressed out person, I guess. So I'm more of a classic laid back West Coast guy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, I don't, it's not, I'm not cognizant of that. I just, I just kind of take it and move on and move forward and, and kind of deal with it. So that's great. Um, you know, I think that's probably it's a good thing. Part of the lifestyle, it could yeah. be an Achilles heel as well too. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think it's a little bit of a lifestyle. There definitely is a different. I mean, I just I just moved back here for this role from eleven years in Toronto, actually. So it's it's a different it's a definitely a different pace out out here on the West Coast. We're a lot more similar than 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 uh, I would say. You go, it's more up and down here. So we would be similar to a Seattle and a Portland and a San Francisco. LA is its own beast, but mm. um, I'd say in culture and in work uh, uh, work environment and level of casualness and, and whatnot versus Toronto I find it's very much more like New York that that, yeah. that you tend to work longer hours and a little, a little more crazy mm -hmm. kind of thing too. So. so you obviously inherited this team mm -hmm. um, but you also have the opportunity, opportunity to maybe change or update or mm -hmm. round out some edges on that on that team. Tell us a little bit about how you approach team both from creation of that team mm -hmm. point of view and also from a ongoing cultural point of view. Yeah, so I walked in the door and there had been a few moves made with some folks that had been here for uh, a long time. Um, and they had already, so, uh, sort of earlier in 2013, there had been some moves made with a few people. So that had been put in place already. Mm -hmm. So we had a, a, we had a, a, a good core that, that, was, that was still here. Um, it's taken some time to uh, assess. I mean, I came in with um, opinions from other other folks as to who should be here and who shouldn't be here. So, and I've definitely I've definitely come at it from a different a different perspective. I've got different a different take on on things. I think not until you're sort of on the ground and mm -hmm. you can kind of feel it versus like what management in Toronto thought. Yeah. and how they were pigeonholing, pigeonholing people or whatever too. So, but then I've made some, I've made some moves as well too. So one of the big moves we've made is, um, is on the, is on the PM producer side of things. So we, uh, we just have a new guy starting who's, who's going to, as, as, as more of a digital software uh, background. And it's definitely something that's been missing here. So it's a big piece yeah. that we've kind of changed up that person have a new person coming in, um, definitely changing kind of roles as well as I, I think I think assessing people's skills too, right? So you, if um, if a person's here for a long time, they get kind of pigeonholed in a certain way. I come in, just um, I look at things a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. I think so, different different skill sets a little bit differently. So. Do you have a particular way that you might describe your style or philosophy to team culture and team management? Um, I'm ha I'm I'm pretty hands on. I'm I'm a part of it, and and, and to get in, to get involved, to get my hands dirty, to assess things out. But at the same time, I'm not a I'm not a micromanager. I like to give people I like to give people their their mm -hmm. space to be able to perform and to be able to uh, either succeed or, or or fail. I guess. Um, I I I guess that's. Personally, I felt like you know I've carved out my own path, and because I've taken it upon myself to do it, mm -hmm. so I kind of look to other people like that. So I would rather have a team of people who are really um, uh, can are, are capable to run with something with with some with with minimal check-ins versus micromanaging. I just I just it's not we're so busy. We don't have time to micromanage, but. A, but B, that's not my style anyway. I'd rather, I'd rather give, I'd rather give, give, give the rope to people to, to do their, to do their thing, to, um, uh, and then, and then let's have, let's have check-ins. Let's, you right. know, let's, let's do it that way, kind of thing too. So I have, I have installed a few things. So, um, 
some new practices like for example we used to have a, a, a weekly status where we'd spend like a good hour and a half kind of a thing mm -hmm. going through it and that's kind of it so versus I've moved us towards more sort of agile project management so we have a daily huddle at 9 17 uh, we uh, stand up and we do a do a quick work around the horn of what everyone's doing and the idea is that we're all responsible for our own things and we know that I it's for me I can I can help people manage their time mm -hmm. I, you know I hear a creative guy going doing this 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 and this and I'm like no you're not it's just impossible for you to do all those you can do this okay so let's help everyone else let's prioritize so it's a way that people can take ownership of their day but it's also a way that we can all be accountable to each other and it's been a great it's been I think it's been a tremendous thing for us so it sounds like uh, your leadership style is to be um, a catalyst to other people's success. Is that, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but yeah, that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think that there's a lot of young. It's a young team, so I kind of look at it as everyone. Everyone's trying to forge their 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 career. Mm -hmm. um, not everyone's going to stay here forever, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and you know, if someone gets another opportunity, I wouldn't begrudge them for it. But at the same time, let's let's help them with their personal career, but at the same time, what's best for us as a team and, and, and what, are we, you know, what are the pieces we're missing and what do we need to fill into. So. Yeah. One of the things that you discussed earlier was this idea that we're starting to maybe dovetail more across different domain and responsibilities. Yeah. Um, how do you see the business part of that coming into people's day-to-day -day work? Do they need to understand the running of the business more? Yeah, I think they do. Um, especially the creative people need to have a better grasp on that, and I think that's what you know we're we're working on that. At the same time, though, I think the the um, the watch out, the caveat with that is then is everyone's doing everything, and, mm. and there's too much crossover, and so. But at the same time, I think our our roles are becoming more hybrid. I'm also trying to work with people to go like, okay, well. You don't need to be doing that right now. Okay, so who's going to do it? Okay, well let's figure that. Out. Like, no, let's figure that out. So, um, so although I think our roles are becoming more hybrid, I do think we still need to create those boundaries around like, who does what and who's responsible for for what and being 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 cognizant of certain people getting overloaded with stuff. They're just going to do it because they feel like no one else is going to do it. Well, that's, right. that's not really fair to everyone else. So. so much like you, a lot of us who are in leadership positions in this digital space have come up through that domain. Hey, we know we know this stuff that mm -hmm. is interesting, that's new. Yeah. Let's talk about it. That's given us the opportunity to, to step into some roles. What's the next stage? Where, where does digital design, digital product creation, digital marketing, where does that all go from here? Because it seems like it's matured to a point where it looks similar to to an industry that has been around for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's not entirely there, but mm -hmm. what do you think the next phase is for? Yeah, the I think I think, I'm, I think on my end of it, the advertising, I, think I, I really think there's a difference between, especially a, a true digital shop, a true interactive shop. I think you've got the ones that are sort of in the advertising world and the ones that are in the software world. And there really is a difference still right, in how they project manage it and how you run it and there's still different models so mm -hmm. i think i think more of that software model especially with um so i've been talking about agile development mm -hmm. and things like that more of that's creeping into 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 our in, into our business i think um, so some process and methodology yeah and, and the pricing of things too right mm -hmm. back to my comment about the economic model i mean like fee for service just doesn't work right like mm. it, it 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 works but it's it's not i don't think it's our long-term way forward uh, what do you think it, is the way forward uh, i don't have that i don't have that totality <laughs> answer with an answer i think it's some i think it's, it's i think it's yeah i think i think when it comes to uh social media content for example i think it's more of a it's more of a it's got to be more of a SaaS model software as a service model and it's mm -hmm. going to be more of a of a of a, of, a, of a monthly, um, uh, not really retainer, because that's the old that's the old model, but more mm -hmm. of a monthly subscription, mm -hmm. and it's you know the bronze, silver, gold level, and with the bronze level, I can expect this amount of content, and mm -hmm. you know, I think that's kind of from a 
social media content perspective, that's where we got to go. But that doesn't solve um, some of the production side of things and so on and so forth. So I think it's more of a, it's going to be more of a, of a hybrid, I think. So yeah. we're never going to get, I, mean, I shouldn't say never, but we're going to be a while before we get rid of charging by the hour. And I mm. think that we still kind of need that to a certain extent. But how do you start? How do you start pricing these other things? And I think it's in advertising, we've always just come up with ideas and built them and off they go. And I think, you know, how do we kind of hold on to some of that stuff and own some of that stuff a little bit more so that, you know, so the other part is, is how do you, how do you, how do you own things like as if, as if it's a product mm -hmm. and then we sell it, we sell it, we sell it, we sell it. So um, something else we're grappling with and trying to figure out. So if we're going to build a, some app for a client, you know, traditionally it would be build a TV spot and that's what it is. Mm -hmm. It's the cost of it and off it goes kind of a thing. But if we're building an app, how do you, you know, is there a model that, well, it's going to cost X to build it, but then we can, we can resell it and resell it and resell it, right? right. So it's, 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 a, it's a number of moving parts. So I think we're still trying to figure out our spot and roles and, and how we can actually do it and then we can start figuring out how I said, I think yeah. too. So. And what's the role in that transition with the client? So the client's obviously feeling some tension as well around some of these new ideas and an older model, as you say. Mm -hmm. What are you hearing from them? Is there anything that they can contribute to the process, this, this transition? Um, well, I mean, I think on the client side, what's changed, I think, in the last decade is, is, is procurement's involvement. So it's a constant. It's a constant grind and a constant question of this. And so, mm -hmm. if it's all based on hours, there's a constant questioning of, of what those hours are, and, and, mm -hmm. and if we're making our money off that way. Then, uh, good example is the, what Oreo did in the the Oreo in the Super Bowl last year when the when the power went out. Mm -hmm. So, what what you know? What is the value of what they came up with? I would argue that. That little that little ad that they posted when the power went off got earned, garnered more earned media than probably any multi-million dollar spot. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was one of the most talked about things. So, you know, would that take them an hour to do kind of thing? So, yep. what's what's the value of that to the client? What's the value of that, and how do you price that versus what's the value of a multi-million dollar? Right. Budweiser ad where you pay millions of dollars to post the, mm -hmm. the get the ad up there and but the agency makes all their money off of the development of that 30 second spot right so mm -hmm. you know I don't I don't think the clients have that answer right now either too so but they're probably looking definitely mm -hmm. and they're hearing from all different kinds of you know new ways of doing it and new agency models and, and, and whatnot for sure yeah so it's a um turn this conversation, maybe end with this. Tell me a little bit about um, the role of culture in, in the team and product creation and campaign creation. Um, I have a fascination with that soft stuff because being a scientist myself, it's scary. Um, tell me a little bit about how you maintain culture or whether it's something that you do even consciously or... To be honest, it's something that I really got to work on. Um, it's... Uh, I can find myself getting caught up in the grind and, and, and sometimes it's like, you know, I'll get someone on the team and be like, let's go for drinks after. I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. You know, I hadn't thought about that kind of thing, right? So it's a con it's something you gotta be, that I personally have to be cognizant of and, 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 yeah. and, and think about. And um, so I think a big chunk of it is, 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 is one, is just constant conversation and, and dialogue and communication of where we're going and what we're doing and mm -hmm. it's just those little moments throughout the day of just having fun while we will be doing it so you know I think one of the hardest things for me is if I'm if I'm feeling grumpy or something like that to check myself and go like okay well if, if, if I'm exuding some grumpiness it's gonna be it's just gonna especially with a we're not a big team here right? it's mm -hmm. just gonna permeate so it's how do you keep the how do you keep the fun going? How do you keep the laughs going? And if someone's feeling like really stressed out here, it's kind of like you know, it's advertising. It's, we're not, you know, we're not no one's dying here. It's right. Like, not I, I had an old boss whose voicemail was. Uh, I always remember it. I love it. 
It's, it's snidely was, you know, I'm out of the office, blah, blah, blah. But if you're having an advertising emergency, you know, as if we have advertising emergencies, right? Like, get our clients sometimes will just get like all over us and you, and you just, and it's just, and you feel like uh, you're just under the gun and you gotta perform and, and you know, and, and maybe it's a mistake or whatever, but we're not dealing with lives here. We're not, mm. we're not, it's not world peace. It's, it's, a, it's an effing ad or, you know, like a stupid piece of content or something like that. Right. right. So I think it's just keep reminding ourselves of that, right? This, you know, we, we chose to be in this field because we like creativity. We like, the, we like the fun, yeah. or at least most of us. Um, uh, we like to uh, uh, build things, and, and um, you know, it's a it's a fun industry, right? Like, there's no yeah. You can it's like you know, there's nothing wrong with profanity, and you know, uh, you know, there's always lots of uh, you know, after work drinks and things like that, right? So it's 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 not it's not a dry thing. So we've got to kind of remind ourselves of that mm. too. So so it sounds like you found some work-life balance there. You obviously still around after all these years, so it's yeah, I'm, it I'm, you. yeah. This is the, it's a young person's industry. There's no question about it. Um, I think you know, um, I'm, I'm one of the few people here with kids, and I'm definitely older than a lot of a lot of the, a lot mm. of the folks here. So it's just it's just keeping, I guess, keep, keeping keeping young. I guess. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I just love it. I mean, I, I feel like whatever we were just talking about, like the challenges and what it is. I mean, it's it's what's kept me excited. I think in this business yeah. is that it's going through such an evolution, and I want to be. I don't have the answers, but I want to be part of figuring that out. So mm -hmm. um, I've been. I've gone through a whole uh, uh, bunch of years where I've gone into a smaller. Uh, shops that weren't part of sort of a big, the big, mm. the big WPP network or Omnicom mm -hmm. network, which would have uh, kind of thought for a long time that that's where I wanted to go because I feel more entrepreneurial. I feel more of a builder. And I've enjoyed coming back into this, the WPP, the, the big, the big beast actually, because I feel like I can still be the person to, I can be entrepreneurial and mm. I can build because I think as an industry, we're still trying to figure it out. But I like I like the the um, uh, infrastructure I guess the, that that isn't that is in place like it's yeah. it's that that's great so I can I can fall back on, right. on that I, you know that's that's definitely that's definitely in place. Entrepreneur, I think they call it. Yeah, yeah, right, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, but you know, it's it's it's. Oh, I think also I've enjoyed coming here where I'm um, I'm in. I think I think something that's I think I think. It, I, I know I struggled with it, and I think a lot of other a lot of other folks do. Is that when you're the digital person and you're being looked at to provide digital leadership, but you don't really have a digital team of people, um, that's tough. Versus, I've got a team here and I'm a leader here, but so I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a leader of people and a leader of of uh, of, of a of a, a center of excellence, I guess, as well too, the, the, you know, where we're going with it, right? So mm. I think that, I think it's been, I think, I think there's been a lot of people that have had a difficulty going into the agency environment and they're, they're leading from a, only from a skill set or leading from a, leading from a sort of a, he's the expert, you know, bring, bring him into the room, but mm -hmm. you don't have the, you know, the, there's not a, there's not a team to kind of, mm -hmm. Back you up, almost kind of thing. Need to be between those. Yeah, so I think it's. I know. I, I know. I, I know. It's something that I struggled with at a couple of smaller shops where it's. It's you know you're not, you're not really leading anything per se, right? Like I was leading, I was leading a, a, a practice and a and a and a an expert in something, but I wasn't actually leading people kind of a thing too. So yeah, that's what's been great about coming back yeah. here to this environment. I'm exactly. sorry. You know, back to what we were saying at the beginning, like I think the tough part of the job is the HR side of it, but I guess I kind of, you still, you, you still got a team, and you're driving the team, and you've got the pieces, and you can play with the pieces, and you can figure out like what do we need, and what are our holes, and it's, it's, it is, it is like, this isn't a widget business, it's a people business, right? And so, yeah. what yeah. we're creating every day is not, is not, is not widgets, but we're creating, 
creativity and so it's about the people so okay thank you very much for your time Neil. yeah no really problem. appreciate it some really nice insights there